Let me. The first thing I'd like to do, just so I have it on tape, is just to get your name first and last. Okay. So if you go ahead and give me that. Eugene Morgan. And you go by. Gene. I like Gene. You like Gene. Have you always gone by Gene? Not. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have any nicknames in the service? No. That, it, that you can say on. <laughs> oh, in the fire department, I was known as Blackie. Blackie. And when I came out, uh, one guy was. That used to. Uh, in the Navy, you know, you couldn't think of something, you'd say the damn gizmo. Well, one guy started calling me gizmo. <laughs> <laughs> but Blackie, most of all, I was known in the fire department. Now, I'm going to switch some. And, and the other part is, is the fact that, that I want to know that these were real people. Yeah. Because like I told somebody when I studied a history book, Abraham Lincoln is just a character to me. Mm -hmm. There's not a real person. Well, now that I've met these veterans that, yeah. that I can talk to that were at Iwo Jima, that were oh, at Pearl Harbor, all these that were just names, names, now it's real people. And that's a lot of what we're trying to do here. And the other thing is, is they, a lot of them were just kids. Yeah, they were 17, 18. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, after we come back from Okinawa, we took that suicide plane. Well, they, they uh, 250 young kids just out of boot camp. We only had 14 days. We took time. Wow. And so we didn't have time. We wasn't uh, speed all the way. We didn't have time to tell them where to abandon ship or hardly nothing. We didn't have time. They were scared. And here are these kids. I call them kids. Here I'm 25 years old. I figure I'm an old man with these kids because I've been on there for four years. See, and that's the way I felt. These these were just kids, and I'm an old man. Was that your first ship, the USS? That was where I went on it. When I, when I joined the Navy, went over the Pearl, right after, uh, in about middle of January, aboard the ship, somebody, the group we went over, some guy says, officer said, uh, well, here's four or five ships, pick one. So the, the guy picked this one, and I says, oh my God, my brother's on it. He was a first class baker. And I came aboard at, at night about 10.30 and found him. He was in sick bay with infected toe. And he was just reading a letter from my folks that I had just joined. And then after the Sullivan brothers, they transferred him off. You remember this? Yeah. So that was it. Wow. So I had a good, uh, I had a good, I didn't go hungry for a while. Now how old were you when you got in? 21. 21. Wild. <laughs> all I wanted to do was play baseball. I was playing, you know, semi-pro around here. And that's what I, all I wanted to do was play ball. Then war broke out, I went right. I start that night, Sunday night, started to sign up. And I wanted a few days, and they said, well, uh, come back Saturday, you'll take your oath, and you'll be on your way to boot camp. Went to San Diego. The 13th, we left here the 13th, of Saturday, De December 13th, got to San Diego, and we was there about a week and a half, then they moved us to Belboa Park. The zoo, you know, and we was there about a week and a half. Next thing we know, we're in a ship. We pulled into Pearl Harbor, in the middle of January, aboard the ship. So, had you ever been out of Seattle before that? Oh yeah, I've been down to Los Angeles. Yeah, I went down. Yeah, but Pearl Harbor. You, uh, oh, I never been over. No, never been. It's the farthest I ever away from here was Los Angeles. So, huh? So that's amazing. December seventh, Pearl Harbor gets bombed. December 13th. I'm on, on my way to boot camp. Wow. About the middle of January, I, I'm aboard the ship, 42. So what was it like getting on a, the USS Indianapolis? What, do you remember the first time you saw it, what you thought? No, I don't recall that, no. I remember we saw all the ships, you know. We, we, so somebody, we was going over, somebody said, well, they're sending you guys over to help clear up this mess, all those ships, see. And we got there, you know, we. We saw them all, you know, and God couldn't believe it. And of course, I don't, I don't remember about going aboard the ship, what I thought. I don't know, maybe it was all so new, probably, but that's it. And then the was when you arrived at Pearl Harbor, was it still? Oh, yeah, they were still working there. Yeah. What did, what did it look like? I mean, we see pictures yeah, of the bombing, but, but now a month well, later. Yeah, they're, they're working on them, you know, it was just wreckage. Records, you know, just twisted steel. I can remember, just twisted steel, you know, and they're all working, and oil all over. They're working all over, you know. You can see them cutting. That. So that 
was it. Now, being a young buck like you were, you probably never imagined that that could ever happen no. to any ship you were on. Huh. And uh, first cruise uh, in February, we went down south. And we cruised around down there, and, uh, and the, the Japs were uh, coming down, down New Guinea. And so, so the carrier force and us, we went off off Port Moresby. And the planes flew over the Sandy Old Only Mountains, caught all the Jap troop ships that were ready to invade Australia, and they bombed the heck out of them. And then we went cruised around again and then we went up and we was going to go into Rabul, the main Japanese base, I think it was in the Carol Carolina Islands, and uh, 18 big bombers came in. And uh, I can remember O'Hara, he shot down six in five minutes going through this formation. I can remember that little plane. And so we, we scooted out of there then. Then we came back to Pearl Harbor, we were always back to Frisco, and uh, nine liners, fully mechanized troops, we took them all the ways to Australia. They were, because they were figuring that Japan was going to invade Australia, and we took these, I think it was 40,000, fully mechanized, all their equipment. We took them all alone to Australia, and we were south when the Coral Sea battle took off. Then we came, then we came back to Pearl, and that's they sent us up to the Aleutians because they knew they had broken the code, and they knew that the Japan Japan was going to hit uh, Wake Island and the Aleutians, and so we stayed up there. We was off of uh, Dutch Harbor when they bombed it, and we stayed up there all the time until they took everything back. He was from one end of the island, and that that was a scary part because we figured if he went down in the water, 20, 20, 15, 20 minutes, you know, and that's the way we were, and so that's when the midway battle, and and, and Spruance, you know, he won that. That that was a turning point. They got the four carriers mm -hmm. that t took the best of the Japanese pilots because it takes three or four years to train a pilot, and they lost four carriers. And then we came back, and then I guess they started in the Gilberts and the Marshalls, and all through, we went all through to Iwo Jima and Peleliu and all those islands, Guam and all that. And what, what was your duty? What, where well, were you? I became a, a coxswain, then a master at arms. I mean, a boat's mate second class, then I went to master at arms force. And that was like a policeman, you know, we took. Uh, you're like a policeman, keep it. You're, do what the captain says, you know, you carry out his orders. In fact, I've got a picture of our crew up there. And uh, my buddy I met in boot camp, he was from Gretna, Louisiana. Him and I, we, we went in the same division, made cocks in the same time and everything, you know, we made our liberties together. And he got off before the last cruise. And uh, I saw him here, uh, oh, 10 years ago, went down and found him in, down there in Louisiana. He wow. thought I was dead. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, we, we buddied around, you know. So what, what was a day in the life like on the, on the ship for you? I mean, uh, did you always feel you were at war, or was some of it just... Oh, some of it, you were just, you know, same thing, and then, uh, of course, uh, you just lived, you know, you, you did your work, and, you know, you stood your watches, like first then was four on, four off, continually, you know, except that at, at meal time, you know, two on and two off, at four to section six to eight, but the rest of the time was four on, four off, you know. And then later on, we got one out of three watch, and finally one out of four near the end of the war. Most of the time it was, you stood your watches, you did your work, like uh, I was in the 40 millimeter, begin to be a first loader, you know, the 40 millimeter. And I, when I was a coxswain, then I had this crew, we had the mess halls to clean up the mess halls after chow, you know. And then we have to scrub them down and all that. And that's what you did. You stood your watch. You'd, and then if you was going to bombard someplace, well, usually in the, maybe in the morning early, you'd have sunny side up eggs. That was a big deal, you know. 
One time up in the Aleutians we was going to, but they had a fire in the galley. We ended up with scrambled eggs, and I think they scraped them off the deck. But that was that was a big deal if you're going to have a battle, you know. And then, uh, of course, you'd hear that jury sound at general quarters, you know. You had general quarters every hour before sunrise, you know, and before sunset, general quarters, because... So it was just, that's a routine you did to continually. With the, the, the hour before sunrise and sunset, was that a, 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 a drill? I mean, that was a pattern. Yeah, it was a pattern you had, yeah, because they, you know, everybody had been man everything, and maybe they have a little drills, you know, you know, to get everybody working together. And then when you had, you talked about the um, shooting down some of the planes, uh, yeah. you mentioned the name O'Hare or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, he shot, yeah, that, going through his formation a little. Those bombers way up there, and here we had 1.1s then. We didn't have the 40 millimeters then, and it was firing straight up. And, <laughs> and I don't, I don't think the range of the planes were. <laughs> but you could see that little plane, and then the formations would go together, and another plane would come down. But that was the first, you know, we saw. So what's that like? I mean, I can't imagine. I don't know. Just there, we're looking at it. The plane's coming down. Everybody's cheering. Like, you know, we'd shoot down a plane, everybody would cheer and yell. I mean, that was it. And they'd make cuss, get to some, you know. I mean, I, that was... Because, again, it sounds like you never had the thought that... No, you, that didn't, you didn't think you. about the guy in there, you know. It's another... Just a, a, a piece of equipment up in yeah, there. Yeah, shoot the guy. Trap shoot. Swear when I shoot him down. That was it. And then, I mean, you, you kill the son of a gun, I mean, that, I guess that's the way it was. Probably saw these soldiers in over there, you know, they cussed and swore and yelled at one another. So, scared? Sure, got scared. You know, when uh, the planes coming in, especially when, the, uh, the, when they start those kamikazes, those suicide planes. You know, they kept coming, coming. You wonder how in the heck they can get through that fire. And you'd hope these are looking, aiming right at you. I remember one time we was all set to bombard uh, Attu or Kiska, all formation. Somebody says, look, God, it looked like a couple of hundred planes flying in formation. And I could, we no aircraft carrier, but I could just figure, well, here comes the bombs, you know. Well, it turned out to be geese or ducks flying in formation. But from the distance, it looked like, no fooling. But, oh, God, was we scared. And then, then like, like at midnight, they sound a GQ up there and... Uh, Big Jap Forestry discovered, you know. God, that scared me because here, you know, up there in that water, you 15 minutes. You're... When it turned out, we was chasing ourselves. I later found out one of my friends in the fire department, he, he was in uh mechanic in the uh, PBYs up there. Well, one of his planes spotted us and messed us, us and then goofed us up. <laughs> he told me that afterwards. Uh, Jason is tail. Jason is tail, yeah. Now, when you got on the Indianapolis, it was just another ship, right? I mean, today, everybody knows the USS Indianapolis, but when you got on it, it was yeah. another ship in the fleet. Yeah, but it was uh, found out afterwards it was a well-known ship because President Roosevelt, that was, a, you know, took the cruise. My son, my brother was on it when they went down to South America, you know, and he was a wrestler in the team, and he wrestled. You know, for the president and that, and uh, and, wow. and uh, it was a well-known ship, and there was a lot of guys wanted to get on it because it was a, it was a good ship. And now, where did it come? Because it, it came back. Was it to San Francisco or San Diego that it picked up the pieces of the bomb? San Francisco, San Francisco. Hunter's Point. Hunter's Point. What was that like? I mean, did you know what was going on, or? Uh they just put this big crate, 15 by, what, three, 15 feet by something, put it in the port hangar. Nobody knew what it was. And I seen that picture where these two sailors between the, the bar, they're carrying this drum. You, you read about that? I, I saw the picture. I don't know where, I don't, I haven't found that picture yet, but I saw the picture of it where they're walking along the deck before they became aboard ship. Just, yeah, and uh, that big crate in their port hangar, 
Marines had to guard it. They were supposed to keep guys away. And I know that they sat on top with blankets and they used to play cards, you know, try and keep you away. And somebody who said, oh, that's a PBY engine. They have to get over there, you know. But I found out after checking this that uh, the 13th of uh, July, when we was in Murrow Island, just before we got repaired from that suicide plane, that... Uh, McVeigh got called in. He said uh, that they were going to get the ship ready. He had their 15th or 16th. So you have to a secret mission. And so from uh, usually when you come out of the shipyard, they have a breakdown cruise. You know, you go go wide open and turn and this and that. You know, to make sure everything's okay. Well, we didn't have that. Because you've just been in getting things this, fixed up, ship shape up, again. And, and uh, go over to Hunter's Point in San Francisco. And that's when they loaded the stuff on. They said, uh, they told them they're going to leave in the morning. And then I, I found out, and when I read, I'm checking up in this stuff that we got out of the harbor and there was planes and boats and everything. And, and uh, the ships paused a minute and the motorboat came alongside. And the navigator got this message, and it was a special order from the commander-in-chief to proceed as, as far as you can to Tinian. And that nothing was just nothing was to get in the way. If anything, that was supposed to be destroyed. I mean, sunk or something. I don't know what. But they had orders special. Go, nothing to stop you. Go. And so we went wide open, stopped in Pearl Harbor, took in some fuel, maybe some some supplies. Wide open again. Now, well, how fast is wide open on a ship like that? Well, we could go about 33 knots, 32 knots. A knot is a mile and an eighth. So we can, we was going 30, 32. That's going pretty good. Yeah, wide open. What's a ship do at that speed? Does it get hot or noisy? Oh, or? it's a hotter than heck below decks, but it vibrates to beat heck, you know. It vibrates. Hotter than heck. Because we had no air conditioning, you know. And uh, pulled in, uh, Tin Yan has no harbor, so they, you know, anchored out, and the barge came alongside. They loaded the stuff in the barge. And that was it. Then we went down to Guam. Stayed overnight there. He was going to go to uh, meet uh, one of the task force. We was going to join up with them, but first we wanted to some practice for all these young recruits we had aboard. We had we we exchanged, you know, two hundred fifties, and even some officers. So we had a lot of, and we didn't have, didn't have time to do any of this going because we was wide open, and we were supposed to have. Some practice when we got to Leyte Gulf, and he wanted to do it off of Guam, but they don't do it at Guam. And they said we'd have to wait till we got to Leyte Gulf. It's all set up. They'll, we'll, we'll meet our task force and we'll have uh, practice with them. And uh, and he wanted a destroyer because a, a a cruiser don't have anything to pick up a sub. So we don't have no sound. Uh, they don't need any. It's clear out there. There's all nothing in your way. But they knew the Japanese code. They knew they knew the Jap subs were out there. There's been reports from ships and planes that was in that area, spotted. They even named the I-58. They knew where they were. They didn't tell us. They said it was secret. They didn't want the Jap Japan to find out that we knew the code was broken. But they didn't tell us three days before we got there, this destroyer underhill was sunk there. When those Caton, Chitons, suicide, well, they rammed it and it blew up, it blew the destroyer in half. They didn't tell us that. Same area, right? See, about the yeah. same area. They didn't tell us that. Planes are spotted flying, you know, I mean, uh, ships going through had spotted uh, contacts and subs and that. They never told us. And so here you have... They send us in our... That's why this this book is in the harm's way. They, they send us. 
And you have a crew that, that is pretty green. Yeah, we have a, yeah, there are 250 green, you know, we're not really up to A1 shape. May never have been on a, on a vessel before. Yeah, kids right out of, some are probably not even out of high school. But uh, they only had 14 days and uh, they didn't tell us this. We just went on. And uh, so, what would it, theoretically, what did they want you to do for practice out there? I mean, what would you do for training? Well, we was, we was going to meet this task force, and uh, a plane would, would come out. Oh, sleeve! We'd have anti aircraft with anti aircraft, you know. And we were supposed to have uh, gunnery practice. You know, they'd set up probably tow sleeves and stuff, and you fire at them and. I don't know where, where where they'd bombard anything if they'd show that, but had to have something to teach these kids. And well, we didn't show up. We didn't show up at uh, Leyte Gulf when we were supposed to. There's, you know, you're assigned when you leave one one area. The other area is notified that you're going to be there a certain day, so they got a spot where you're supposed to be. And we, we didn't show up that morning. This one young officer, I guess, told his senior officer, well, the India isn't there. Well, maybe they got orders to change at sea. That's happened because we was a flagship, see. We was waiting for Spruance. We was going to pick up Spruance, too. Spruance. Uh, Admiral Spruance. Oh, Admiral Spruance, yeah, yeah. Manor, and, uh, uh, and Admiral King had put out an order that uh, non-arrival combatant ships didn't have to report them. But it didn't. But the, the the guy misinterpreted that, and he figured that you know the combatant ship if they didn't arrive. But he he figured if they didn't arrive, you didn't even have to report them. So he messed up on that, see, because they may had orders changed at sea. So that reason here was the order. So we didn't show up. So they didn't. Here's the order. We don't have to report them. And uh, that's why that's why nobody knew he was gone, why we was missing. And it just so happened that that uh, Gwen flying that Ventura plane out, and he happened to spot that oil slick. He was ready to bomb it. Remember, he got that row, opened the bomb bay door, was ready to drop a depth charge. And whoop, he got down there where he could see what was up. He didn't know who we were. And then he start, you know, and then pretty soon they, there's people in the water, didn't know who they were, Japs, or didn't know who there was. There was no report of ship. Nobody knew, you know. And I guess a little later on they, when the more more planes came and they, they found out there was more and more people out there, well, gee, it must have been a large ship then. So then they, somebody asked back there and Leyte Gulf got a little word say, well, what ship should be in that area? And uh, we were supposed to report to this one uh, task force, and they asked him, well, the end report to you? And that was the one we were supposed to meet for target practice and everything. He says, the end, didn't, we didn't meet it. So then all heck break loose, and then they figured it out, and they're in trouble, even back in and the navy's navy's unhappy. They're in trouble now. And they know this is a mess up. They're in trouble. How many people on the on the? There was eleven hundred ninety-seven. Three hundred seventeen survived. So they figured city. they figured about three hundred got killed right off. The first one he had thirty-five hundred thousand uh, gallons of high octane gasoline. The first torpedo it blew the about 60 feet of the bow right off. The second one hit in the forward engine room and uh, hit a fuel tank and uh, an ammunition for one of the turrets. And uh, that's, that's what did the damage. The forward part of the ship from the quarter deck Ford was gone, and it blew this big hole in. Power was out. They couldn't get word back to the after engine room. The screws are still turning over back there. 
and the and here's this great big hole. The ship's going kind of to starboard. Water's pouring in. The pressure, the water, just kept breaking the bulkheads. They couldn't get word back to the if they they had saved a. a Cruisers that had the bow pole broken off by getting it stopped, you know, getting that relieving that. But so that's it, and it just kept going, pouring the water and just breaking everything. Because you're you're right into the water and yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. No, the water just. Where where were you? I was in the port hangar, sleeping in the cot, and it Is woke it me up. Uh, no, no, right yeah. off the quarter deck. Okay. No, it's just main deck. And uh, jar woke me up, and I looked, and sparks and flames coming across the quarter deck from the forward part of the ship, the officer's country. Somebody says, "Oh, what happened?" Oh, somebody said, "I think something blew up a number one fire room." You know, and this one guy, he was a ma he was a chief master at arms. He was over there. Oh, he says, "Good, he back to yards as we go." You know. Anyway, I folded up my cot. All I had were my shoes and the skibby shorts. Uh, my clothes were down the MA shack, which was in the starboard side, just below the quarter deck. So I went aft, was going to go up the starboard side to get my sh clothes, and some guy says, You can't go up there. So I did it. About that time, I could hear the stuff in the galley, you know, pots and pans, and the ship start to list to starboard, so I went up and figured I'd better get a life jacket. So I went up and got a life jacket, walked over to port side where the motor whaleboat was, there was talked to some guys there. They were, the ship was leaning more and more and they couldn't do anything with it. So then uh, some young kid, he says, what should I do? And I says, well, follow me. And so I walked, it was like this, so I went down. You're supposed to go off the high side and I couldn't get up then again, so. I just went and jumped in the water, start swimming. I always said to swim away, you know. So I just start swimming away. It's, black, it's dark, it's black. I don't know if this kid behind me, whether he followed me or not, I never knew. Somebody said, I heard somebody say, here, and there was a raft. So it was so darn full, so I just hung on the side for about two or three days before it thinned out. So you had a life jacket? That's all. The skivvies. The skivvies, my shoes. I finally kicked the shoes off. And oil, we was covered with that oil, that sticky bunker fuel oil. And, that, and then I know I got sicker in the morning and threw up, you know. I guess I drank it. Everybody did a drink, a mouthful of that stuff. And uh, so there, and then, then uh, I had rubbed my eyes and everything got blurry. And I could hear the guys, I couldn't see it, but I could hear the guys with the first morning sharks, you know. And here I'm trying white skivvy shorts and I'm hanging on, I'm trying to get my feet up in there, you know. I couldn't see, just blurry, but I could hear the guys, what they were, what they were saying, yelling. And uh, Was was the raft of just a, a conglomeration of stuff, or was it one of the whaleboats, or? No, the raft. We have, I got, what was a raft? You know oh, how the raft, yeah, the, the okay. rafts, they're open in the center, lattice work, you know, you're, you're and it's down about a foot, you know, and there's, there's one behind there. Like a like a, a, a inflatable raft. One of them. No, that's a. Oh, oh, it's a hard. Yeah, it's okay. a balsa wood wrapped. There's a one. I'll 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 study that. It, one. And, and in the middle, it's like a cargo net down about a foot or foot and a half, oh, and okay. there's wood slats in the bottom. So you sit, you know, on your feet. You're you're mostly in the water because if there's so many, it's just barely floating. Yeah. The water slats. So. So everybody. Has piled in. You're hanging on on the side, you know, tied a rope. You know, his little ropes, and I don't know. It just kept going, going, and uh, when you think back, do you remember what you thought at all? Did, you know, or does it? There's a lot of it. I laid in bed trying to. A lot of it just completely blank. It's gone. There's just little parts I can remember. I can remember, you know. Uh, and you couldn't make out anybody unless you recognized your voice because it was just all black, you know, that oil. Couldn't make out. And of course, I, I, my eyes are blurry. I can't. And I can remember the guy who should yell planes, you know, I could, I could look up in the sun and the sun and oil and everything, I guess. Most of the guys had their eyes were scratched, you know. And uh, there's a lot of it I, I laid, what happened? Just blank, can't think of it. 
And then finally, uh, there was room enough to get in the raft, thinned out. Guys, are, guys that were hurt, burnt, they didn't last too long, you know. And uh, I guess about uh, every day they said, well, they start talking about, well, they're going to pick us up because we we're supposed to be in, you know, they got an SOS off and this and that. We didn't know for sure then, you know. Well, they'll be looking for us. And, and of course, then every day, well, how come? We, they should be coming pretty soon, you know. And uh, it kept going on, and why? Well, how come they're not looking for us? And then I think the third day, then it got desperate. Then guys, a lot of guys were going, was, was getting thirsty. Some guys started to drink salt water. Then guys started to have nightmares and dreams. And that's when I can remember guys swimming up to the raft and saying, well, we were just over the island over here. A beautiful, a lot of beautiful women, all you want to eat. We're going to go back. Who wants to go back with us? And then there was guys, oh, we're going down and get another drink of that nice cold water from the scuttlebutt in the number one mess hall. That's where our drinking fountain were. They'd dive down. I can remember that, I can remember that, you know, and guys come up and, oh, there's a Chinese ship just on the horizon that's waiting for us. Who wants to go? We're ready to go over to swim over to it. This is the third and fourth, where the guys are getting, losing, going out of their head. I don't know if I went out of my head or not, but, and uh, just kept going on, and how come they're not looking for us? And I think a lot of guys just gave up. Figured they left us, you know, guys with drinking salt water, then they started, uh, there was even fights where they thought it was a Jap. And even they even talk, even reports that some guys got stabbed, you know. And that guy's going out of their head. And uh, there's parts I remember, I, don't, I, I guess I stayed sane. I, I remember, I, I know I was fighting, I seemed to be walking, trying to walk. When they picked, when the boat came and picked me up, and it seems to me I was thrashing and fighting a little bit. And it seems to me that and I says, hey, don't wait for me. And uh, that's, but I, I remember when all the planes came and everybody, you know, and my eyes was clearing up then I could see the stuff, could see the stuff floating down. And I remember this lifeboat came down with three big parachutes and certain guys swam over to it, you know. And Another part, all this stuff coming down, I, I visualize turkey sandwiches floating down. I'm not, I could never figure out how come I, turkey sandwiches, but, but that's but it just seemed like here the stuff came from all over. All these planes, all of a sudden, they were all over. But the, there's a lot of it just completely blank. I mean, what did I do for all these days? I remember, uh, well, I'm sitting there and I, it's and it's. Get morning, the sun ain't out yet, and I'm shivering. It's cold. When you're in the water, it lowers your butt. The temperature lowers your, you know. And I'm shivering. I wish the sun had come out. Then the sun had come out, and then that damn, you'd have to duck down in that boiling. But then we had these saltwater ulcers all over us. They start eating in India. That's what we had. most of the guys had those all over. And then the place you got kicked or anything, somebody, you know, you had a. And. But uh, that was it, and uh, got picked up. Did the did the um, the the survivors did they uh, as days went by did it did everything spread apart so you guys were all over the place? Uh, they, they figured we uh, we were spread out from about ten miles by fifty miles because it was guys when the ship was blowing off. And the ship's moving all the time. And the guy's going off different times. Twelve minutes it went down. And the current and the tide and not the guys different groups. And they, they figured we were spread out ten ten by ten by fifty miles. We were spread out. And there was one group found that last day, you know, they were but uh but what the whole heck broke broke loose when they found out it was us because they were in trouble. And How many days were you in the water? Almost, almost five. Almost five, because it got picked up sometime in the morning, the fifth, 
fifth day after midnight. No, it was after midnight because I remember uh, it seemed there was only about six of us on the raft then, and it would the guy came and a couple of guys came in one of those little life rafts that had a little uh, what do you call it water thing. What did they put the water in the canister? No, not a canister. Oh, a canteen. Yeah, canteen. Yeah. We all had a little swig of water. That's the first water we had. In five days. Yeah. And uh, so that was that was it. But who 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 picked you up, or what vessel? What uh, the Bassett. Bassett, and they, they took us to Samara, and there were three groups, really large groups. Well, one large group didn't have rafts. They're the ones that took the beating by the sharks. They're the ones that took the beating because they tried to keep together, and anybody was injured or that, you know, they. And that's where the sharks came up in the center of them, and anybody drifting away or falling asleep at night, they tried to stay together, tied together. And that's where they had fights and everything. In fact, one place, a shark came up. Uh, this one raft was damaged, and the shark came right up in the center of it. But I can remember that one day looking down, I think it was the last day, looking down through the bottom of the raft, hey, these sharks swimming around, great big sharks, just swimming around. Didn't seem to bother me, you know. But I, but I, uh, I, I never did see that one group where the sharks, the guys, they could hear, you know, when the guys yelled and screamed, they could see their buddies, the sharks. And you probably read that. Okay. Yeah. And so... Did it sounds like you never um, thought that you might not make it? It doesn't sound like that was part of your thought process. No, I think I remember it. everybody. I know everybody made the, oh God, we're gonna we're gonna be this and that. We're not gonna we're gonna be good. We make this. Everybody, you know, everybody made that confession. I know they did. I talked to a lot of guys, but you know, I figured we're gonna. Every day, you know, I just kept going, going, and uh, I don't know where half of it gets me. I, well, I can't remember so much of it. So much of it. somebody says, well, you know, there's a lot of it. According to nature, the real bad stuff, nature has a way. You ever hear of that? You don't remember. They they black it out. Survival. I mean, if we if we remembered every bad thing that ever happened. I mean, that's why we built calluses, is for protection. Because and, and I laid in bed oh, a lot of times, you know, trying to think. All these hours, all I can remember is bits of them. Do, do you remember anything funny happening? I mean, I, I, it's a very tragic situation you're in, but you're three days... Oh, oh we, we, got, we got picked up, this one guy... They had a bucket and a diesel in it. They were trying to get, and the guy stuck his head out trying to get that diesel off, and his feet went out from under. And he, he almost drowned in that bucket of diesel. I can't remember. I'm laughing to beat hell. Here it's serious, but I'm laughing. I, I told the guy's, uh, his wife that. He passed away, you know. I told his wife that, you know, and, I, and she just laughed. I says, Here I'm here serious, and the guy's almost drowned in diesel oil. It was funny, but that's only. Did, 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 was I, it? Um, were there conversations, or were you just spending all your energy surviving? I mean, did you, I think we've talked, but I don't. That's what I don't know. Just, I know I'm sitting there, and the guys that can't make them out. I don't know a lot of it. Just, I'm out. Maybe I'm just. Did you know any of the people? Because you said you didn't write. If you recognize their voice, and you could identify. The other guy there, was a. Was a pharmacist mate when I f first got in the raft, because he was kind of in charge, but he didn't make it. That's the only guy that I remember. Re uh, other guys I don't remember. Oh, another young kid, yeah. But, and uh, a baker came up, tried to get this young kid to swim with him, and I, I hug on that young kid. I remember that. These are those are a couple of guys I remembered, you know, just from. That's it. Guys come up swimming, you know, want everybody. Those are the things you remembered. Thinking they could make it. Make it. Yeah. How'd they get you out of the water? I mean, uh... Well, it's cargo net, and they said, can you climb? And I, and I, I don't think I can make cart 
climb up next. So they took me up in a stoke structure, you know. When, but some guys climbed up, some guys fell back, you know, could make it. And uh, I, oh, I went the, next to the last day. Uh, I saw something out there. I thought it was a K ration. It was in the thing, gray thing, five gallon buckets in gray canvas or something. So I went swimming for it. And some guy yelled, look out, and something hit me, and I pushed on it. Felt back half my skibby shorts are gone. So I got back to the raft. Fast. <laughs> and so I figured I'd tell people, well, everybody asked me, well, how come you make it? And I said, well, you know, I says, the shark don't, found out, sharks don't like Polish sausage. I says, I'm Polish. <laughs> That's what I figured. Well. He hit me, and I, I must have been a shark. I pushed on him. I don't know that. And the guy yelled at me, "Look out!" So, but uh, wow. so that's it. It didn't bother. I was back to the raft. Where did you recoup when they when they took you? Oh, they took us to Samara. And the uh, the most of the guys went down to Peleliu, you know, and then they came back in the hospital ship. We all met at Guam later on. And uh, that's where we all got. Wow. When did you discover that uh, um, uh, that you had taken the bomb over? When we was, after, when they dropped the bomb, we was in the Samar, and they came, when they dropped the bomb, they came in and told us that well, that's what you took over there. And it was scary then, you know, what. And what did you think about that? I, I mean, thinking, that, what, you, I wish they didn't invent that. You know, because we found out what it did, and I figured, geez, why did we invent that? So that's it. But then, then after we all got together at Guam, and we all came back, went to San Diego, all got there, and then I uh, had a month's survivor leave, <coughs> and I came home. And that damn phone, telegrams and letters, people want to know what if I do. I told my mother, I says, I got to get out. I can't take, any, take this anymore. So I went clear across town. And this girl I had met before, she lived next door to some friends of mine in, in High Point. You know where High Point is? And uh, so I went over and stayed there. And then... Uh, I guess I'd get a lot of drinking then. Anyway, we, we got married, and then, then I went right into the fire department, and all this stuff left my mind then. Because I got married when the fire, I had, you know, n new job, new. So when that would have been what, nineteen forty six? That was forty five. Forty five. Well, that you got just, married. I got discharged in November. To, I got married November the eighth. Got. Discharged the 27th, went right in the fire department uh, f around the 1st of December. I, I never thought about the aspect of uh, a person, a survivor coming home on leave and everybody being able to figure out, oh, he survived, I want to find out if he he knows something. So they started calling and Oh, oh God, yeah, they just, and they finally, I just drew. I, I couldn't think anymore. We were supposed to tell them, as far as we knew, you know, that... As far as we know, they went down at the ship. You know, they didn't stop. But then I found out a Marine that from West Seattle. Uh, I went and saw his folks. And I found out that he lasted three days in the water. So his, his mother, you know, and I said, as far as I know, he went down the ship. And she says, no. She says, the master, master sergeant had called me and told me he was in the water three days. This was a kid I got to meet. Anybody from Seattle. You got, you know, you're on the phones aboard ship, you know, you talk, or anybody from Seattle, and he went. Anyway, he he, he married, uh, the, at that time, the warden of Walla Walla Penitentiary, Smith, married the daughter, so he'd go home and leave. That's where he went to the prison, so we used to razz him on that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he was a good, and then a guy in the fire department was a good friend of him, went to school with him, you know. Guy in the fire department, so I got him. This guy's name was Dick Tracy. 
I can he's a redheaded Marine. And it wasn't we had some pretty good Marines aboard. It was a pretty good bunch. I got along with him. Of course and and, and that master at arms, you know, uh, you're all over the ship, you're in charge of all this, you're you know, and every you get to know it names I don't remember, but you get to everybody You know rank and so right, they are. yeah, yeah, and you had to take you gotta take the guys to court or so did did the Navy uh, instructed you when when you got to go home? They said, "Well, here we're going to debrief you, basically," and said, "No, this is all this is all they told us. As far if anybody wants to know what happened, you know, just say as far as you know, they went down with the ship. That's all I was told. Just to say we didn't know, you know, anything else. Wow. And I I don't know when I found out whether it was a Japanese sub that sunk us. Oh yeah, because you didn't even know that when it went down, did you? Uh, I remember journeying back and looking, and the ship is like this. I saw that. Wow. And I was, it seems like it would be quite a ways from it then. Of course the ship is, and I swam. But I remember looking and seeing it do that, and some guy, in, you know, what's that? But as far as knowing any of the guys in the raft, I couldn't, except that one guy, that's all. But it gets me is, why is so much of it blank? Hours and hours. What did I do, just sit there in the sun? Sometimes it was rough, sometimes the sun would come out. That night, you know, it was it was black, you know, because that's the reason the captain didn't zigzag. That it was up to his discretion. And even, even your top naval officers and sub said zigzagging wasn't 100% proof. And the, and the Japanese commander, he says, once we spotted you, he said, you was dead ducks. He says, I had suicide torpedoes I could have used, but he didn't. He didn't believe in them. He didn't believe in that. But he says, you was dead ducks because what was it? 20 what? 25. I got you tied down. Just say, I, got, I got a microphone on you there. Let me get you unhooked. I'm kind of a little not too happy with the Navy, what they did after I found out. You know, I, we got proof that SOS was picked up three times. <coughs> SOS from, from, uh, from your ship? Yeah. Yeah. It was picked up. In one place, this, uh, he went and woke up this commander. Read him this message, and he said it smelled like booze. And he asked any re any answer, and the guy says no. Call me in the morning if there's any more. And then uh, uh, another another place where it was picked up. This one young officer sent out two seagoing tugs. His senior officer found out later, was playing cards, found out later the officer sent out these two sea coin tugs. They had been away for seven hours and he called them back. In another place, they figured J Japan usually put out messages like this that they, and uh, they figured it's just a trap deal. <coughs> they even picked up the Jap message that they had sunk a large warship in that area, they never checked it out. I mean, all this stuff, they goofed up, they just... So it just kept... Kept going. And why did they, why did, why did, they, didn't they give us the destroyer? They knew the subs were in that area, they even knew, because there was, there was, the subs were offered there. The destroyer was sunk three days ahead of time. Other ships going through that area had spotted periscopes and had reported. And they didn't tell us. Was it? Do you think it was a? Um, it was a just a result of one little mistake and one little mistake and one little mistake that led to it, or yeah. or. <coughs> well, the biggest what? Why didn't they tell us the, the subs was in that area? Why didn't they tell us that the story was sunk? And all these reports, was, knowing the subs were in that area, knew we was going to go through there. Knew we didn't have any any sub devices to pick up subs, and knowing that uh, usually they'd send a destroyer with a ship like that. And 
1,197 men to send them out. Were you pretty much at stand down? I mean, because you were going off to do some drills and stuff. So yeah. were things a little more relaxed? Too? Yeah, a little more relaxed. And, uh, and of course, near the end of, near the, end of the war, uh, it was more relaxed. And the ship wasn't more, you know, it wasn't uh, different conditions, you know, what you dog down so much. But it was so hot that, you know, they, most of the guy was sleeping on top side. A lot of them couldn't sleep below. Plus, you just got done doing a big mission. You brought the bomb over and dropped it yeah. off and gone full steam. Yeah, we was going to go, and we knew we was going to ready to invade Japan. We knew that was coming up. We was going to have some. And then we found out later, I read a book written by Japanese, what they had waiting for us. How many suicide planes they had with. What the, all the people were trained were going to fight with whatever they had in their bamboo, everything, men, women, and children in the beaches, and what we would have had to slaughter, but they had all these wooden boats they could send out, it would have been a slaughter. And because we knew where, wherever, in all the islands we fought, they didn't give up. And, and we would have lost millions, they would have lost millions. That's what I, pretty much the consensus has been, everybody that I've talked to about the bomb, is they say, yeah. you know, it was a terrible thing, but... but what it prevented. See, a lot of people, you know, oh, they shouldn't have dropped the bomb. I said, wait a minute. You don't know what, what they had, what would have happened. If, you, you know, that there they, they was a big typhoon went through and destroyed a lot of our stuff before the invasion. You remember that? Mm -hmm. they, didn't, they didn't tell you that. They didn't, I never found that out until after. A lot of the stuff in, in Okinawa was destroyed. A lot, some of the ships he lost a lot of stuff, but it would have been a slot. When they they talked about um, the the military had already minted uh, thousands of uh, uh, Purple Hearts. Yeah, they they already had them minted. What they not, they not. Knowing because we knew what would have happened had we, we gone. knew we yeah. knew because we knew from all every place we every island we fought the Japs that they didn't give up. And even in Okinawa, we knew that even the, the people, the, not the Okinawan people themselves, but the other Japanese, they fought suicide. Now, did you ever, because you talked about after the war, uh, uh, meeting a young, who was a young Japanese soldier at that time, you met him later and talked to him. During the war, did you get close to any Japanese soldiers, or was it after the war that you had it? Oh, we had some prisoners aboard, you know, that's all, we never got to talk to them, but they just, we had a few aboard, you know, they didn't bring them, because I remember one time we had a Japanese uh, interpreter from the University of Washington, you know, and so they'd bring some aboard to have them questioned. Oh, I remember uh, Tarawa, 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 uh, we got to go to shore right before it was, right after it was secured, and here's dead bodies laying around and stuff. Line spread on them, stuff scattered all over, hand grenades. In fact, one kid from Queen Anne, he was walking down the beach, some guy fooling around with a rifle, killed him. Anyway, I picked up a bunch of papers and stuff. I mean, and anyway, sitting, waiting on to go back, here was a guy scraping brains out of a helmet. Some guys were bringing hand grenades back. The ship stunk for rotten flesh, you know. But anyway, to some of these papers, nobody says, well, why don't you take these up to that uh, Japanese commander? Maybe there's, you know, see what. So I did. Anyway, he said, well, I'll look at them. And I found out that some of these papers was a diagram of the island <laughs> defense. <laughs> he wouldn't give me those back. <laughs> That's it. It's amazing because war. That's I've, the one. Never, I've never been there, but, but war seems to change your psyche a little bit. I mean, because. You have to adjust. Yeah. I mean, like you described, I came on the beach and there were all these dead bodies. I mean, if you were yeah. to walk out now, oh yeah, outside, that that would be shocking. Mm. But no. did it, did you yeah. just hand grenades and you know, and these? Uh, I mean, this one's a big deal compound, you know, where big shells had hit, you know, reinforced concrete that thick, you know, big shells and that, and hand grenades and just stuff. Bomb, palm trees blown, you know, 
palm trees didn't you know didn't splinter bad you know that's what they a lot of their dugouts they had palm trees you know and they had the spider traps that they call jump down in the hole little trap door there there be and they just spread out. there was lime over these bodies you know didn't have time to clean them up that that's the first time we got to go ashore like that because that one kid got killed stupid somebody picked up a gun but we, uh, then in the, in the marshals I was Cox and motorboat I got to go ashore and pick up the mail you know oh uh, these beautiful islands you know palm trees and coconut trees and after we had blow everything off blow everything off and then I understand we had to pay the the French and the British for all the palm trees he knocked off those islands <laughs> and oh the, the and this the, uh, one of these lagoons in the marshals I remember taking a working party over to a ship to help unload it or something and and the motor conked out we're drifting you know and I don't know if these other islands are secured we're drifting and one I come back one last ship and I just happened to grab under the, the boat hook, you know, the boat thing. Otherwise, we would have been ashore in a little island. <laughs> I don't know if there was any Japs in that one or not. Didn't want to find yeah. out. God. Uh. And where was this one place? Uh, oh. Well, after we took the suicide plane in Okinawa, they moved us to a little group of islands. Uh, where they had the supply ships and the ships would rest and we sat in there and the ship almost got sunk you know it it uh, they just secured from bombarding the our, our duty bombarding Okinawa and turning away and the plane came right out of the sun and the guy in the f 20 millimeter the wing hit the shield the plane hit the side of the pl the ship and the bomb dropped off the wing and down in the mess halls, they went right through the edge of the table where the guys were sitting. Went down, hit the shaft, blew the two, two p propellers off in the starboard side, and knocked the ev uh, uh, evaporator out. Big hole. Got over in the islands. They finally got a, somehow they made a wooden patch. They got it pumped out. They poured concrete down in there. And here, while the concrete, here a carrier behind, and the Jap suicides diving around, he had a carrier behind us, and, he, and we couldn't fire because they didn't want to bust the concrete. We sat there, <laughs> but anyway, we came all the way back to the states. So. See now, is it? I mean, again, you describe that, and you kind of smile and laugh. Yeah. Does is the mind so powerful that you really don't think you're gonna get it? Ah, that's it. You now you're sitting there, you know. <laughs> You go like this, just like when I, I talk about all those planes off of Okuna, uh, Kisco or Atu, you know. <laughs> I'm thinking <laughs> the planes, you know, the bombs, you know. We don't have no carriers up there. Because they're close, right? I mean, a lot of these they planes were, are... Yeah, they look like in formation, you know. Uh, but I, well, now, you, you talked about playing baseball before you went in the service. Yeah. Did you play? Did you have a team on the on the ship or not? I know some. We started one day, and that was one day we got it. One day of baseball. We was in Pearl. We was in Pearl Harbor, and we was up the ball field, and that's when a ship blew up down there. Something happened. The ship blew up. That was the last of it. We never never had that time. And I don't know if you ever heard talk to anybody in the Navy that, that had recreation and island of Mogmog in your Lithy group. <laughs> they brought you off the ship so many, and they brought you in this place, Bob wire around it. You s wait in there, then they march you up in this other place. You got two cans of warm beer, and you had to drink it there. When you got finished, same pro <laughs> just like cattle. <laughs> and everybody I talked about the recreation of Bogma. I had the Bogma Ulithi. Two cans of warm do, beer. Do you remember what type of beer? Uh, what was it? Was different there, kinds. No, just whatever. Uh, whatever. Yeah, like in uh, Pearl Harbor, there at uh, what they call it, the Breakers. It was a U.S. old place. So every day you go out there, they'd make your hamburgers. They had a few girls you could dance, and every day they'd have a different beer from all over the country. So that yeah, was recreation Pearl Harbor. I talked to my dad. Was in the uh, he was in Navy Air, and uh, he said if you take a sock. 
You take and put your beer can in the sock and dip it in that jet fuel and then spin it around because it evaporates so fast it'll cool that beer oh, off. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the yank, yank ingenuity was pretty amazing sometimes. Oh, and, God. But, uh, so, yeah, what did you do for fun? I mean, I, because I know that there's the battle time, and then but there's just a lot of... Oh, you just talk and, you know, I guess you just talk BS and play cards, you know, at... Uh, after chow, you know, after everything cleaned down, you could they'd put tables down and they could play cards, but they weren't supposed to show any money. See, they weren't they were supposed to use chips, you know, but and uh, play cards. So did they find a way around that? I mean, did you? Oh, they use chips. Yeah, and... well, they do it. We do. It. But then we had a couple of guys that was working together, card sharks, and we had the word anytime we saw them in the game, they got kicked them out. They were. They'd get in there and start raising each other, see, you know, and for, for we found that out. And then, oh, and at that time, uh, uh, the, the color that the, the, the were the, uh, for the officers, see, they had their own compartment, but they weren't allowed to come up and play cards in, at the mess hall. And so the guy in charge, he, you know, I was mastered on, he, you know, he says, what about if down in our compartment, can we play cards, you know, until 10 o'clock when I turn the lights off, you know, and we'll keep it cut, because there's a guy sleeping in another compartment right over here, a white guy, you know. We're not allowed up there, and well, we'd like to play cards. And I said, sure. And I, and they cleaned it up. I'd go down just before turning the lights off. They'd be cleaning it all up, quiet, no squat. I gave them a break. I said, yeah. So was that the ship was segregated? Just that with those there, yeah. Just for the for those uh, those quarters. But later on, I remember that then the colored start coming in in the regular stewards they call them, didn't they? Yeah, for the officers, yeah. yeah they had they you know they took took care of the officers, you know. They had. Uh, but uh, what about? Do you, can you remember music? Do you remember? Well, guys had music. Song? There were some guys had. Banjos and that, yeah, some guys, yeah. But I mean, did you have a, when you think back, is there a song that comes in your head? or is it Oh, we had one guy, got from Texas. Got to go and sing that damn Yellow Rose of Texas. We were about ready to kill him. Yellow Rose, <laughs> oh, God, he kept singing that. But, oh, we, we used to, uh, the South and the North, we used to battle the old Civil War, you know. Yeah, we had a lot of guys. We had quite a few guys from the South, you know. And, uh, We'd, we'd kind of razz one another over it, you know, about the battle, battle. So, got along, no? That Civil War still ain't over. Still ain't <laughs> over. <laughs> now, did you, the, the people that were in the raft with you, do you know today who any of those people were? No. You just... I've, I've asked them, you know, if they remember. So some guys were in that group because there, there was, I don't know how many rafts there was in this group I was in. There were four or five rafts, I think. Uh, I, You know, I never did see those other rafts come to my eyes. I never did see those. I could hear them, but I couldn't see them. In fact, I got in trouble. One officer, something, I didn't like what he said. And I said, oh, forget the goddamn gray gold braid out here, we're all the same. He says, well, if we ever get picked up, you, I'm going to have you court-martial. <laughs> a shark didn't care whether you was... And every, everybody out there, everybody wanted to be alive. Right? Right? That. So some people still tried to keep protocol. Oh, and yeah, to keep they ranked. did, they did, yeah. Huh. In fact, this one officer, when that plane landed, a PBY, Mark's landed at PBY that busted up, you know, they tied all the... He, he said, next one just start swimming a plane, I'm going to have court-martial. And here's guys that I figured, what a stupid thing to say. Here's guys been out there, the shark's been nipping at them, they've been out, they want to get out of the water and this and that. And he makes a stupid statement, he even wrote that in a book and bragged about it. And I figured, hey, that's it. We had good officers aboard. We had good ones. We had some other. The worst we got was these ones that flunked flight school came aboard. Oh, they they were. 
I remember we was up in the Lucians in the Army Navy game, and we was lit, they had it on the radio so we could hear it. We're sitting, we're cheering for the Army. <laughs> what else could mind? He said, "What's this?" And I says, "I says that ain't our team. That's your team." <laughs> he walks away. <laughs> that's, that's the way I was. I was just, of course, uh, you don't know my dad. You know, when I went down, uh, he the, to go to boot camp, you know, and he says, looked at me and he says, well, you're good for something after all. <laughs> uh, I was 21, I was living at home, you know, and I was... Uh, it changed a lot of young kids' lives. I uh, mean... This it, thing. You, know, uh, you know, a lot of kids, uh, a lot of my friends I went to school with and that grew up with, well, during the Depression, a lot of them joined the uh, CCC camps. And they said that was the best thing that ever happened to him. And just when we got in the fire department now, this one battalion chief, he said the best group of men that I ever saw in the fire department was all you guys that came out of service because you had some discipline, you knew. Yeah. Yeah. And why, they should have kept the draft. They should have kept the draft. It might come back. They need they should, they, these kids ain't got nothing. They don't know nothing. They don't know how to take orders. And the teachers are afraid of them. <laughs> they are. Yeah. I went to Catholic school, you know, and what I was told, you're there. That teacher box your ears. Don't come home and tell me you get boxed again. I, I went, went to high school. Yeah. I went to Episcopal school. Yeah. It was I a little that. softer than that, but it still was yes sir, no yeah, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when you get together with with other survivors, we talk. But that's why you find out about your friends. You thought, and you find out all this other stuff. You find out about the guys talking about, you know, about uh, <laughs> seeing these guys, the sharks. I, you know, I was lucky. I, I didn't get to see that. You know, the the sharks, the guy, the sharks coming up in the, seeing their friends and scream and all that, that blood and that. That's why you. That's what you get. Is it a, a, a when you get together? Is it a um, a, a lot refreshing? of funny stuff too? They talk, you know, but but is, is it is it in vigor? Is it refreshing? Is it is it like a counseling session? I mean, where you have something in common that nobody else because yeah, you, you want, I want to know about this guy or what happened or you know the, everybody. The, there's a million stories. Just like one guy, the, the, the reporter there, you know, and he says, you know, this is interesting. He says. All you guys got different stories. The guy said, naturally, you know, we all got because we was in different places, different things happened. It just goes on, on and on, and you go back there and you find out more. You find out more what happened. You learn more every time I read a book. I learn more, but it's sure funny, you know. After I got married and went to the fire department, this thing was, my mind was go off of it. It didn't come out till that first book was written. I read that book, and then, whew, and then from then on, all this stuff starts coming. Then it all coming back. And a lot of a lot of veterans did that. They came. Yeah. I mean, they came back to run the country, raise a family, and put World War Two behind. Damn it! And uh, God, so I got drunk quite a bit too. <laughs> Before and after. <laughs> and, and in fact, in nightmares, it got so bad later on. I thrashed in that. And my wife says, "I got to get a different bed." This was after, you know, when I read the book and start, and all this stuff started coming back. She says, "She said you thrash around in bed all the time. You break my nose or something." She said, "You have to. I have to get a different bed." So all this stuff come back. Do you still face that? Is yeah, that still, he's still good. I sit and I, I go on the ferry, go over to Bremen, I go over to see a couple of guys, you know. And, you know, I like to look at the scenery and that. And a lot of times, I, if I just start staring at that water, you know, then I gotta, I gotta, gotta look up at the trees. Huh. Yeah. So certain things like that will trigger. Yeah, and then I, then I'm not laying in bed, all of a sudden. I'm, I'm, Does it? Does it come back as a movie in your head, or sometimes, is it just a... Sometimes, yeah. What about smells? Because it seems like, because you talked about being in that the diesel, like being in the bunker fuel. Like, does that... I, I smell diesel now, I know. Yeah. 
doesn't doesn't uh, but uh, one thing the one thing that gets me is why so much of it is blank. Like a lot of other guys, I read their, their stories with it, you know. Geez, they, they can remember a lot of stuff. And I can't. Did it, did, when you read stories, does that yeah, that's trigger a, things and bring yeah, back? Sometimes, yeah, sometimes, yeah. And then you start thinking, well, what, what about, you know, what there? Huh. Some comes back. Some, some guys, you know, Jiminy. Some guys saw, saw some real bad things, you know, I mean. And, uh, when you look back, is it a bad memory, a good memory, or just part of life? Part of life, I guess. It's part of life. Things happen, just like I tell people. I said, like, I get up every morning, get my cup of coffee, get my maple bar, get the paper, lick a little bit, my name in and there. Good, I'm in another day. Let's go. So I go day to day. Now I lost my wife, what, two years ago, but. Okay, I, I'm the youngest of six. Okay, my three, two sisters, older sisters, and older brother died with MS. And now my older daughter's got it. So I seen, I seen a lot of, you know, and I, that's life. I, like some people, I say, it's life is, it's just it. Things are happening. So, but some days things look so bleak and that, Next day you get up, everything's rosy. How many times did that happen? Some days, you know, you think, geez, how am I going to make it or what? And I can, I can remember going through the Depression. My dad working the fire department and getting those $5 warts and $10 warts and, and everybody wanted a discount. My mother says, she's not taking no, she didn't. She, we had a girl, I don't know if you remember John Sherberg. He used to be a lieutenant governor, well, his brother, Ran a grocery store in Queen Anne Hill, and he says, "Well, because it's a big family, six of us kids, you know." He told my mother, "He says, I'll, I'll give you full value. I won't discount because you know you." Yeah. But uh, and then, now all these guys, I just went to two firemen that were seven, eight years younger than me. All these guys are dying younger than me, like all these guys. Five of them in, in a month and a half, and there's about a hundred of us left. Now, how many is going to be for the next reunion? Wow. See, everybody. Is that, you, is that hard? I mean, to go back to the reunion and. Yeah, I kind of enjoy it. I look forward to it. Some some of these guys, you know, then you you find out more and more. That's what it is. Go back, have a good time. They take care of us back there. They really took care of us back. We we got one guy that that sets it up back there. He has people adopt us. In fact, one year, the owner of the Colts gave us there was eighty six of us back there, and he sent us all a thousand dollar check and a jersey. And this one guy, he, he has people so so they'll take care of our hotel bills. Back there in Indianapolis, and we got a national memorial. Wow. Well, and you, and you deserve that. I mean, I, I assume that you just felt you were doing your job, but yet what you did for our country, I mean, now, 50-some oh. years later, we're just beginning to more That's fully big, appreciate it. You know, people, was you on that ship, you know, you, know, you were? <sighs> I want to shake your hands. Thank you for what you did, you know. The guy said, you know, you're a hero. That's what everybody's telling me. You know, what you did, you know, now some people reading, I think they're realizing what, because they're finding out all this, what, what really happened, what could have happened. I tell some people, you know, I say, you don't know how damn lucky you are that you're not speaking Japanese or German. Yeah. Do you, it's interesting because when you were out there, did you realize who your enemy was? I mean, did you see your enemy a person, a country, uh, just those people in a Just plane? those people, those slant eyes. Anybody that was shooting at us, we're going to shoot, shoot back. back at them. Yeah, yeah, that's what I looked at. They're going to get me or I'm going to get them. That's war, you know that. That's it. 
But I was I was scared every time we went out. You know, boy, when we come back to the states, you know, and, oh heck, we gotta go out again. It was scary. You know, you you kind of figured we're not gonna come back. Did we learn anything? Is it, do you think that there's a message from World War Two for the generations to come that we may never meet? We ne never what? Well, for future generations, for great great grandchildren that that you'll never meet, that I'll never meet. Is there a message for them from World War Two? No. War, war solves nothing. Found that out, right? What does it solve? And what is that? Oh, but most of most of us now, it's religion, isn't it? And, you know, and I was raised a Catholic, you know, and it was always that brotherly love. And here, Ireland, the Catholic and the Protestant killing one another. And I figure, what, well, what the heck? The whole, and is there any truth in this? You know, the big battle, the last one's going to be down there in Israel, or and not all this. I wonder, is there anything there? I don't know. I'm mixed up. Here, I was taught one thing, and that, and the stuff ain't jiving out like it. I was taught, yeah. right? And that they're finding out stuff, history. Scientists are finding a lot of the stuff that. Is there is there other pe other people up there? When we go, is that it? Is that it, or is there? You know, the more we know, the less we understand. Yeah, you know, so I tell people, I'll find out when I get there. Why worry about it? And there's nothing I can do about it. We know we know we're going to be here so long. So I so so I do. I go to the horse races in the weekend. I go play bingo once in a while. And I go to these deals. I do what I want to do from day to day. Just enjoy it. Huh. My kids say, "Well, okay, don't go do what you want. You earn it. It's yours, not ours. Go do what you want. If you want to go there, go. So I'm going to go to Annapolis. This next reunion is coming up in April. Oh, this April. It's yeah, this April. Away. Uh, uh, this. Uh, Sailors Cruisers Association is going to have a reunion in Annapolis. That would be fun. Back there. Annapolis is beautiful. I love yeah. it. And what did you think <coughs> on on um, September 11th with the with the planes being formed? God, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, the, my daughter woke me up. You know, it was on TV. I couldn't believe it. What the heck? going to do got nuts does that compare to I know a lot of people have said well that will be my Pearl Harbor did, did, did you have the same feelings or is it different or can you even compare Pearl Harbor I was all I came home that morning with listening to the radio about Pearl Harbor you know and my mother came down the steps and of course we knew our brother was in Pearl Harbor you know, and I could I can remember the look on her face when she came down the step. And I I I figured I'm gonna join right now. That's what So that was it. That was it. When, when, yeah. And this I figured he gods, now what? What are you gonna do? So uh, the feeling uh, you don't know what's you, you what's gonna happen next? Something's always coming up, isn't there? Like sports, I'm, I'm unhappy with the sports, not the way it's gone. I, I, I think they're ruining it, and can't they realize that they're ruining it? Sports. No, Seventeen and a half million a year for six, I call it six months of play. And, and, the, and these companies are crying they're losing money. No, it's a... And a, a money's a ruination of everything, I found out. It is, right? People kill kill their own parents for it, don't they? Money or oil. Money or oil. I mean, you, you can put but, the... Well, that's, that's what Japan wanted, needed oil. Yeah, which meant money, which meant commerce, which yeah, meant... Yeah. And, uh, and, and now what they're doing, uh, all these companies moving overseas, And this country's going to. Uh, I say, hey, this country's getting going to get bad. I mean, 
you knock this factory out, the guy's out of work, how many guys below him are going to lose work? And who, who benefits? The stockholders for right now, but then later on, just like I told someone, I says, okay, the factory moves overseas, they don't pay those people enough to buy the project, the, the, the thing. The people here are out of job, they can't buy it. I says, can't they see that? The heck with them. Let's take care of our own. Dominoes. Yeah. yeah. As long as you live, you'll find out. Are, are you proud of your service? Yes. I am. Because what I did, I Because I knew, I, 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 what I read afterwards, I found out what could have happened if we didn't do this. And any time anybody goes in the service, I hey, good for you. And I figured, do something for your country. Everybody should do. And even if you got one eye, one leg, there's a desk job. There's a place in there you go go serve two or three years. Everybody come out of high school should go put two three years in there. Something. We you know it's real interesting when we started this project. One of the big arguments was is is that oh the veterans just want to glorify war. No, no, it's not. You watch that. Uh, Private Murphy and the beach and I geez, I saw that you know, it looks so real in the beach, that arm and the leg and that Private Ryan. Uh, yeah. Private that, Ryan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. I mean, you know, gee. And then the, the of course being aboard ship, you know, and then that we would be firing right over the head of the Marines as they're going ashore, firing right up over their heads as they went ashore, you know. And then later on, I remember off of Guam and Saipan, Tinian, then these bodies come floating out. Japs and Marines, you know, just floating around, bloated, you know. And then we're sitting there, we're having a nice and warm meal, and those guys over there sitting in the pouring down rain, flies, I can remember a million of flies off of Guam, those blue flies, you know, and they're trying to eat K rations. Then every, every so often, so many would come out, we'd have them aboard ship, give them open the gee dunk fountain and stuff, you know. Did the did the Marines and the Navy get along at that point? Or was there still that? Oh, we still that. But aboard ship, we got along. There was a little. But, uh, so that's the luck. But no war. War is God, awful. But look at the... These bombs they got now, they're, they're going to build one twice as big they're talking about. They can blast through how many feet are. <laughs> yeah. Bomb explodes a foot above ground, covers an area, kills everything. This is, it's like after the war, you know, they had all this deal when Russia got the A-bomb and that. Oh God, they got all upset here. Do this and that, build these underground deals and... Every fire station we had first aid and all this stuff, and we were supposed to take the rig out and take it out to our sea tech in the tunnel and all this. And I figured, now wait a minute. If they start dropping those A bombs, I said, that's it. That's it. I said, the ones we dropped were just little tiny ones compared to what they got now. I said, once they start dropping those things, I said, that's the end. There's no defense again, but here they. Yeah, I can remember all the fallout yeah. drills, civil defense. They, they yeah. always had, we'd practice either hiding under a desk or we'd go down the fallout shelter. Yeah. Or we'd... But I said, hey, it's ridiculous. Because you take, you know, the one, little one, now, now the one is 10, 15, 20 times big. And, and they didn't, didn't, don't know today if they start dropping what is going to be tra chain reaction. They don't know. Yeah. And look what they got now. Sub, and they can pinpoint. Yeah. Yeah, they. You know, it, it, I think it comes down to that one that that you know. Almost every vet I've talked to have all said that war's not the answer. It's not. But they don't think that it won't happen again. Unfortunately, you know, it may be different. It may be, but for some reason, to get everybody to get along is. Yeah, but but can you get everybody to think right? You know, to figure it well, hey, this ain't going to do nobody any good. But then you get some nuts, you know. Yeah. 
But why why can't they all sit down together, all the leaders, and hash this over and say, here, what's going to happen? Why can't we sit down and live in peace? Because we start these wars, we're destroying each other's country, blowing up cities, blowing up millions of people. Can't they get together? But then you always got a couple of nuts. It's so darn simple. I could think, you know, I wish I could be running this country out trying to, hey, let's have a big, get all these guys here, okay. Come on now, let's use some common sense. But no, I'm not there. And the sad thing is, is in, and people point this out, it, it is a couple of extreme. You know, it's it's soldiers fighting for one person, whether it was Hitler or Mussolini yeah. or whoever. It's not always a population that believes that way. No. It's, a, it's a charismatic person who... Yeah. Huh. And, they, and then they brainwash. It's the worst thing. Yeah. Huh. Brainwash, brainwash, yeah. You're brainwashed. No matter where you go, you get brainwashed. You go to school, you get brainwashed. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, oh yeah. No. Brainwash. And brainwash is good and it can be bad. Bad, could be bad. Yeah. Then uh, some guys get fanatic about certain things. Like maybe I'm a f fanatic about I'm, I want the Navy. Some guy couple of Navy guys here, oh, geez, oh. I asked the old guy, I says, oh, you're sticking up for the Navy? <laughs> one officer I talked to him, he, he was in one of the, he lives out in North End, he was in one of the ships, you know. And he says, what are you trying to run us officers' nose in the dirt? And I says, no. I says, <laughs> I says, that's the way I feel. And this other guy down here, he says, well, what good is it going to do? Don't, nobody will care. And I says, that means a lot to me. That means a lot to us. And the crew. And, the crew, and I yeah. said, it means that to, I figure, oh, they'll never apologize. Huh. I said, seriously. Uh, why, why did they cover it up so long? They didn't put it out till. Yeah, just, well, when that, when really, the, when the young. When, when Japan surrendered, then they put it out. Yeah. They knew they were in trouble. Huh. And then, then there's that story of uh, uh, Nimitz. Yes. And, uh, but didn't want to court martial the captain. But King, Admiral King, pr pressed it, and there was a deal that McVeigh's dad was an admiral in the Asiatic fleet when King was a young ensign, and that he had reprimanded King twice, and they figured this was getting back. But then after, they ruined the guy's life. They ruined it. Oh, yeah. And he, and he was going up, you know, he was going up. He was well liked. Some guy says, I said, well, we had good officers and bad officers. And I said, here, 100% unanimously, the whole crew backing the captain. Now, don't that prove what kind of a man he was? I said, I had dealings with him. I had to take guys to, you know, and he was just as fair and square. In fact, and at the preliminary hearing they had in Guam, I was an interesting party. I'd I'd meet him, have early breakfast, meet him there, and he'd ride up in his jeep with. I'd just talk to him like anybody else. You know, he was just put his pants on one and, leg at a time. And uh, some days he'd he'd show up in chow line, and if and if he didn't agree with, it, he'd go up and tell the cooks, "I don't want you to serve that stuff anymore." Once in a while, he loved the fish, you know. We'd be in some place. He'd, well, who wants to come back, Fantail? We'd do some fishing or scoot. I mean, that's the way he was. He was. I I had to go see him. I just went up and mocked in his cabin. Come in, sir. That's the way I treated him. You know what? The way I was in there, I was. They're just the same as me. Maybe uh, some guys said, "Oh, this." I said. That's looting baloney. Oh, you're not looting, you're looting. I said, baloney. You could go around and salute every day, and some of them, they didn't want that, I know. You're yeah. supposed to salute them the first time of the day, but no. But some of them would just turn away and look away. They didn't want that. And it got different as you got out on a uh, oh, yeah. on, on, uh, uh, mission, then you, you, you know, 